Because we're so quick to call everybody a friend. I'm going to give you a three-point checklist to help you to identify whether or not that person is really a friend. Can I give it to you real quick? Because a true friend, here it is, number one, here's the first point. A true friend, here it is, will enter into your experience. A true friend, a true friend, a true friend. Look at verse 16 again, it says, And Jonathan arose and went unto David in the woods. Jonathan left his, here it is, setting that was inhospitable. His setting, better yet, that was comfortable. And he went to a setting that was inhospitable. Jonathan is chilling in the palace. But he's willing to leave his context of comfort to go stand with his friend who's in the woods. Because a true friend is not a friend, here it is, who stands in a long distance relationship in the sense that while I'm in the woods, they're talking about I'm praying for you. Now, baby, I need you to do something more than pray for me. I need you to show up. Because a true friend will enter into the wilderness with you. I used to have a deacon at the church at uh, Elizabeth, and uh, he meant well. And uh, he, he would oftentimes make this statement. He said, but pastor, but pastor, I'm with you as long as you write. But pastor, as long as you write, I'm with you. I said, now, Deke, I mean no harm. But quite candidly, I really don't need you when I'm right. I mean, when, I, when I'm right, I'm, I'm good all by myself. I wonder, can you stand with me when my stuff get a little shaky? I, I want to know, can you stand with me? Here it is, when things get a little rocky. I'm not asking you to condone anything that I do, but don't condemn me. Can you, can you show up? Because you got a policy that Jesus does not even have. Even while we were yet sinners, he showed up. Anybody here can testify? He doesn't walk away from us when we are going through our difficulties. True friend, true friend will enter into your experience if by chance, if by chance, you have a friend in your life that when they're going through, they expect you to stop everything you're doing, drop everything you have and show up. But then when you're going through, you can't find them. If by chance you have anyone like that in your life, I'm not recommending that you cut them, but I would highly suggest that you put a check mark by their name. Don't cut them just yet, but put a check mark, put a check mark. Because a true friend, a true friend, I'm talking about a true friend now, will enter into your experience. Here's the second, here's the second uh, principle. Here it is, a true friend, number two. Here it is. When they show up, they will encourage you to endure. They will encourage you to endure. That's right there in verse number 16. And Jonathan, when he arose and went to David in the wilderness, the text says, and he encouraged him. He strengthened his hands in God. Because here's the problem, here's the problem. Some people can show up, but when they show up, they bring their own disposition. By chance, have you ever had that experience in your life? You know, a friend will show up and you felt worse with their presence. I mean, for real, I mean, it's like, go home, go somewhere. Because you're being with me right now, you ain't helping me. Because when they show up, they're complaining. When, they're show, when they show up, they're pouring more grief off on you. See, so you got to be careful because some, some folks are like Job's friends. Remember Job's friends? They did show up. But when they showed up, all they could do was try to find what's wrong with Job. I don't need you to do a critical analysis of my life to tell me what's wrong with my life. All I need you to do is show up. And when you show up, encourage me to endure. I'm tired of folks always trying to act like they're the spiritual Dr. Fields. You want to show up and analyze everybody's life and tell them what's wrong with their life. Can you do me a favor? Hush. Just show up and encourage me. Now, if by chance you have a friend in your life who that when they show up, you get little to no encouragement, I'm not suggesting that you cut them. 
But I do highly recommend that you put a check mark by their name. Because that friend is a little suspect. Can I give it the last one? Can I give it the last one? Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. What's the third and final point and principle of a true friend? Look at what the text says. Here's the shouting part. Here's the crescendo in the symphony of scriptures here in chapter number 23. It's right there, verse number 17. It says, and he said unto him, that's Jonathan speaking, fear not, for the hand of my crazy daddy shall not find thee. Here's the shouting part. Look at verse 17. And thou shalt be king over Israel. And Jonathan says, I love it. And I shall be next unto thee. He said, as a matter of fact, even my daddy, he knows it. Did, did you get it? Did you get it? Oh, you missed it. You missed it. Here it is because you didn't get happy. Jonathan shows up to David and says, I know you're in the wilderness, but you're not going to stay here always. Pull yourself together, David. Fear not. Maintain your spiritual swagger, David. Fear not. Because you shall be, hallelujah, the next king of Israel. And Jonathan says, and I'm not tripping. All I want to do is be next to you. Because a true friend, here it is, I'm about to get you right here. A true friend will not only enter into your experience, a true friend would not only encourage you to endure, but there it is, number three, a true friend is not envious of your elevation. They, 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 they ain't envy. They're not envious of your elevation. See, really, Jonathan has every right to be tripping because based upon kingdom protocol and based upon how a kingdom is supposed to operate by the principle of natural succession, Jonathan was supposed to be the next king. Saul is Jonathan's daddy. But Jonathan says, I know that God has already bypassed me and has already anointed you to be the next king. And Jonathan said, I ain't even tripping about it. A matter of fact, as long as I can get a chair right next to you, and see, Lord, deliver me from folks who cannot handle my elevation. Because you will find out who your real friends are when God starts taking you to a whole nother level. Some folks in your life can't handle where God is taking you. If by chance you got a friend in your life who every time when you get a promotion, when you get a new car, when you get a new handbag, they start tripping, I highly recommend cut them, cut them, cut them, just cut them, just let them, cut them, cut them, cut them, just let them go. They can't handle what God is doing in your life. You can't, you won't show up. When you show up, I don't feel any better. And then every time God bless me, you tripping, you need to go somewhere. Let, let me help you with that. Because people will call you cocky and arrogant. People will call you cocky and arrogant. I'm not cocky. I'm not arrogant. I just believe that everybody does not deserve to have a front row seat in my life. So sometimes you have to have an usher's ministry. You got to learn how to kindly escort them to the back row seat of your life. And you tell them, now you just watch me from afar. Because you can't handle being this up close to me. Because if you're tripping over what God is doing in my life now, what are you going to do when he supersized me? What are you going to do when he blow me up? Tell him, child, you sitting over here tripping over this little hoop that I got right now. God is about to do something even greater than that. <laughs>